Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that we can come gather together, Lord, and look at your word. Mm -hmm. We pray now, Lord, that you would use Pastor Izzy to speak to each one of us. It's amazing how you can meet us right where we're at. Lord, one study, but you can touch each of us with different challenges, different different stages of life. Lord, you just continue to uh, lead us and guide us. Lord, we just pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit here this morning. Lord, and just as that breeze is blowing in off the ocean, which we love for the air conditioning, Lord, we just pray for a blowing of your Holy Spirit now. And we just pray that you would fill us overflowing, Lord. Equip us, equip the saints, Lord, that we would be able to follow you this coming week, Lord, for the good works you have for us. Yes, Build Lord. up our faith this morning. We ask that now in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, guys, it's a blessing we get to be in the Word of God together in His Holy Scripture. So if you turn to 1 Corinthians 15, we get to pick up where we left off last week. We got to the uh, portion that we were talking about how we have earthly bodies and we get to look forward to our heavenly body. And that's something that I'm excited that, I don't know about you, anyone besides me excited about the upgrade that we're going to get when we trade in these earthly tents, Paul calls them, for a heavenly mansion that the good Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. And today we're going we're gonna to be looking at those passages. Some people were asking me, where is the part about the mansion? that Jesus goes to make a mansion for us. And I'm going to show you that in a, in a few minutes. But it's John chapter 14, in the first 1 to 6, if you want to be, you know, some, some of my note takers and the ones that like to get a little head start going there, you can go ahead and put a little bookmark there, and we'll turn to it in a few minutes. We'll see the words of Jesus who tells us about that. And then Paul, the apostle, of course, he had that encounter with Jesus and he seemed to um, get a first-hand instruction about what was going to happen in, in, those heavenly, in the heavenly realm for us. And I'm excited to share this with you. This is the part that we're going to learn today that not all of us may face death. If the Lord should return before, before we actually die, guess what? We get to skip the whole dying thing, right? We get to go be with him. And some people ask me, where did you learn that? I said, from Jesus. Don't worry, I'll show you. I didn't make any of this up. It's, uh, it's, too, it's too fanciful for me to figure this one out. I mean, only God could come up with a story this great. But it's, um, it's one that I want to show you how important it is for our faith to be encouraged and reminded that the Lord is going to return. The Bible said, Jesus said, it will come. my coming will be like a what? A thief in the what? In the night. He said, if the people were expecting if you're expecting a thief you're not gonna you're gonna greet him with a shotgun right at the door hey you're not coming in you know you'd be prepared but it's gonna overtake many by surprise and it and it sh as believers it should never t overtake us by surprise because Jesus told us be dressed in readiness be ready Th he didn't say when he would come he said only the Father knows when I'm coming. They asked him, when are you going to be back? He said, that's not for me to know. That's only for the Father. So if some guy sh gets up and starts preaching to you, I know when Jesus is coming back. What do you do? Run. You're like, this guy is a false teacher. Just get out of here. But if he says, the Bible only tells us the signs of the times. And when you see these things begin to come to pass that there'll be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, famines, those kind. Do we have any of that happening today? Like, he said, and, and so what did Jesus say? Be dressed in readiness. Be ready. Get ready. Look up, he said. Your redemption draws what? Nigh. That means it's coming soon. I think we should be ready all the time for the coming of the Lord. Now, I think it, because, especially because I like what First John, in, in First John chapter 3, how many of you know this passage? See how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the what? The sons of God. The children of God. Another translation says, we're his kids. And because he loves us so much, he has adopted us into his family. Now, just before we go into to Corinthians 15, let me start this off with what John the Apostle wrote there. 
in 1 John chapter 3. In verse 2, he goes on and he says these words. He says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet appeared what we shall be. But we know when he appears, we shall be made what? Like him. Because we will see him just as he is. And everyone, look at verse 3, everyone who has this hope, what hope? The hope of seeing Jesus. And being changed to be made like Jesus. When you see the Lord, guys, as a believer, he's going to clothe you instantly. This is what we've been talking about in Corinthians. The, your mortal body will be swallowed up by immortal. Your corruption will be swallowed up by incorruption. You'll be made completely whole in his image when you see him. Now, I can't wait for this day. I'm like, this is going to be the best day ever. And everyone who has this hope, the hope that someday you're going to see the Lord and you're going to be changed. If you have that, how, how many of you have that hope? Just a few of us, right? It's like the whole audience. Man, we can't wait to that day. But if you have that hope, you don't know when it will happen. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. But you live in ex anticipation that it could happen. I remember when Wally Dolan was here helping us. He's on the mainland now in Idaho. But he would all, every Sunday we'd be setting up and it, he'd look at the mountain and be all cloudy. He'd be like, it's a good day. Jesus could come. See, there's clouds. He says his coming is going to be in the clouds. So every time it was cloudy, Wally would be like, all right, this could be it. This, I mean, just, just the scene is set. We don't know what day, but this could be the day. And if you live like it could be today, notice what John says. If you have this hope fixed on Jesus, it purifies you just as he is pure. There's a, there's a sweet work behind the scenes that God's spirit does in your spirit. Whenever you think, hey, the Lord could come back today. Does it make you think maybe a little differently if you thought, what if Jesus really was coming today? Would, it, would we stress about some of the stuff we're stressing about if the Lord was really coming? I mean, some of us be like, thank you, Jesus, you know, <laughs> throw that to-do list away. You know, I mean, the stuff we stress about so much when it's put into perspective of the Lord's... Or how many of us would be delivered from temptation if we thought, oh, Jesus could show up right now? Maybe we're tempted to go into some area of sin. It's our favorite area, you know. It's our pet sin. And we're just about to go pet our pet, you know. And the Lord goes, I'm coming. And we're like, oop, I don't want to be doing that when he comes. See, the hope of seeing Jesus purifies your heart. And that's why I think it's so masterfully taught to us by Jesus himself. I can only tell you the signs of the times. I can't tell you the day or the hour. Only the Father knows that. And I know it's because if we knew the day or the hour, well, the Bible says our hearts are desperately wicked. And who can know them? We, we're so desperately wicked. If we knew the day, the very day, and the very hour of that day, you know what some guys would do? They'd be like, all right, I can sin until the day before. Maybe I repent midnight the night before, you know, because I've got still six hours yet. It's going to be 6 a.m., they said, on the next day. So I'll, I'll just party till late now, night, and then they'll repent, you know, 1 o'clock or so. The problem is we're, we're desperately wicked. And if we think that we can somehow, okay, I can get away with this and then I'll repent later. Well, Jesus didn't want to give us that um, loophole. So he says, I'm not telling you when I'm coming. Be ready all the time. Does that keep me a little more pure in the eyes of the Lord? Does that make me walk a more straight and narrow walk when I think, hey, man, he could come any minute. I don't know. I would like him to come. Like I've said before, I'd like him to come like on a sermon like today. <laughs> Guys, for the rest of eternity, I'd be going, I told you he was going to, we should be ready. We didn't know when, but it could be any minute. And then he, boop -doo -doo, the trump and the clouds parted. And, and some people ask me, where did I get that whole thing about the clouds parting and the, the, the whole trump? I'll, I'll show you that too if you want, because these are important things that, I mean, I think they're foundational things for your faith. If you could, what if you have a young person that's new in their faith, and they're like, where does it say that? You know, could you, could you tell them where it is in the scripture? 
that we get this idea of a trumpet blowing before his return. And the clouds, or the sky, it says, renting, t being torn asunder, like, like a big curtain peeled back. And then behind the curtain, we see the Lord. And he, it says, and a multitude. And my daughter, Joy, she always liked this part when I would go over this because <laughs> there was, she was into horsies when she was little. And, uh, and there was flying horses. In this story, she was like, oh, this is better. The Bible's even better. We, they come flying in on flying horses. Th this is good. Now, that's found in Revelation, that part. But, but the promise of our Lord's return and his return in the sky, that, that the sky being peeled back, that, that whole thing is spelled out in great detail in the book of Revelation. But it was even foretold at his ascension. In the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. I want to show you this. One of, the, one of the sweet passages. We actually have this on the authority of the angels that were standing by. I like this one. After Jesus, of course, had died and rose from the dead and showed himself by many convincing proofs alive from the dead over a period of 40 days. He, it says here in uh, verse 3, the, he, he spoke of all the things concerning the kingdom of God to his disciples. And after this, verse 9 tells us, after he had said these things, he, it says he was lifted up while they were looking on. And a cloud, a cloud receives him <laughs> out of their sight. Can you just picture this? Here's this cloud just, oh, I gotcha. And just opens up and it, Oh, and it says, and while they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. Who do you think these two men are in white clothing? These are angels. They, they said to them, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? I like this in the, in the Greek. Why do you stand gawking is our closest word. It's literally in the Greek. Why do you stand with your mouth unhinged? Their, their jaw dropped. They were like, <laughs> and, and <laughs> listen to the words of the angels to, to Jesus' disciples. Why are you guys like with your mouth all hanging down unhinged? Don't you know that this Jesus that has been taken up from you into heaven will come just in the same way, the same manner as which you have seen him go. They, this isn't like, you know, I didn't make up this story. Jesus, like, here's, can you just picture this? I mean, do, do you guys remember when Philip, if you read a little further in Acts, well, he, gets, um, he gets martyred for his faith. And they're throwing rocks at him, stoning him. And, and his words were, Father, forgive them. They, they know not what they, he, I, I'd be like, Lord Zotsam, but, you know, he was, he was more gracious. Forgive them, they know not. And it says he looked up and he saw Jesus seated where? Not seated, I'm sorry. Standing to receive him at the right hand of the Father. And I always wonder, okay, he's being stoned to death. He's standing on the earth and he's looking up to the sky and he sees Jesus standing next to the Father's throne. How far away is God's throne? Have you ever thought about this? How far away is heaven? Or is heaven just a different dimension that is, we're blinded from the fact it's right there. I mean, you just peel the curtain of cloud back and there is heaven. I mean, the, how many of you think heaven's really, really millions and billions of miles away? I don't think so. I have a feeling the Lord is sitting right behind the curtain and we just don't get it. And <laughs> Philip sees him and goes, oh, I see Jesus standing to receive me. Fa forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. And he, he, he gets martyred for his faith. But these angels look at the men that had followed Jesus for all these years like, what is wrong with you guys? Why are you so amazed? Why are your jaws hanging down like that? <gasps> don't you know? And the angels are saying, don't you know? The same way that you saw him go is the same manner in which he will what? He's going to come. You look at Revelation, and the sky will peel back, the clouds, and he will come forth in it with his multitudes 
following him, this whole myriad upon myriads of, uh, uh, of believers behind him. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.